Well, it is the second week of playoffs of midseason showdown. Uh, the second day is now complete with coverage brought to you by Alien, where I'm joined right now by Aphromoo to talk about the unfortunate zero uh, three series against Hundred Thieves. So, Afro, really quickly, let's just get the discussion about today out of the way before we can talk about sort of the broader season. Uh, what what do you think went wrong? Why the the shutout with Hundred Thieves? Uh, oh, well, during the series, uh, I, we could tell across three games. A lot of our guys were nervous. We're missing a lot of spells, let's be honest. Because every time, you know, we're contesting, missing straight left, and just like, if we land anything, you know, we're going to win. And it happened most of the game. And I think we just, third game, definitely second-guessed ourselves. I'm pretty sure I was just dead in bottom lane, but uh, we went backwards. So that was unfortunate. And then we still could have killed him. Even, I, I landed W on this guy, doesn't flash. And, you know, just has to flash, you know, forward and set up to the side, and he dies again. So just like off of those plays in particular, like we, you could tell like we're, in a, whereas you know for screaming, I mean we're gonna kill those guys down. Uh, that was mainly the overarching theme, I would say. Well, you, yeah. I saw on Twitter yeah. that you mentioned that you were really proud of the team for making it to playoffs. So obviously, I know you would have wanted to go further, but do you think that was kind of the goal for you guys this year? And or sorry for the split, and also mm-hmm. as. You know, if it is just nerves, you think like this is a chance for the team to go further next time? Oh yeah, definitely, definitely a lot of promise. I would say uh, our draft was great. They got Exodia two games, you know. Uh, but going into it, definitely there's a lot we don't know. And it's obviously amplified in playoffs. Definitely got punished for our mistakes that were also happening in the scrims. Uh, I do think that's just experience. Yeah, I'm a you know. Well. well uh, we just gotta take it, take it in stride. Uh, I do think these guys learned a lot because there was a lot of things either we didn't know or our draft caused caused our draft to look like that. You know, everything just all together. So we just gotta be better. Take our off season seriously. You know, practice our matchups, et cetera. Well, uh, you know, I'm I'm very curious what your thoughts on the split were uh, overall mm-hmm. for Dig because I. At the start of this, they showed a graphic where I think three of the analysts had predicted Dig at the start of the year, maybe on the dive, as being ninth, ninth, and tenth. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, I believe it was that. It might have been eighth, eighth, and ninth. But regardless, very low. And then obviously Dig, I think, overperformed so many people's expectations. So how about you? Did the team overperform your expectations? Is it short? Like what? what is your assessment of the team here at the end of the split? End of the split? Hey, we got a lot of talent, you know, but... Not everybody, you know, Exodia is as as you form. So it takes a little. Uh, these guys, Aaron, or sorry, Fake God and Max, I played with those guys on Hundred Thieves, you know, they were just thrown in, you know, to try to figure it out, solve what was going on with our team, you know, mix and match. So they didn't really get a full split of LCX experience. This is their first time. Uh, Neo had three or four games, you know, in LCS. He was also just throwing an optic till Arrow came over. So I think it's a good experience for the guys and we obviously show we have a lot of talent being able to make playoffs uh that was very surprising i thought we're gonna have to learn way more than we need to you know so but it's good we did we're able to make it playoffs get this experience in our belt and i do think summer is just gonna be times better just because we were kind of i do think we're very nervous playing all those games today uh Neo, in an interview with me a couple weeks ago, claimed he was the best ADC in North America. <laughs> uh, I'm curious what you think of his his perf- uh, performance over the course of the split. Do you also agree he's the best? I mean, not to create a rift between the two of you in bot lane, but I'm mm. I'm curious. You've played, obviously, with a lot of great uh, ADs over the years. So what, what do you think of his performance and everything this year? Uh, I think it's great that every AD carry – or sorry. Neo in particular has ego because I don't think you're going to be a good player at the carry role if you don't. So take, for example, you know, double if you have FBI. I mean, that's all I can think of with all my tactical is a little bit ego too. Yeah, that's true. So I think it's good. When I played a carry, I had fucking ego. So uh, we did lose. So it happens. You know, he's got to take it and be humble. Yeah. But I think going into next play, he definitely can perform at the top. Uh, even the games today, like a couple of misplays where you know he's coming back after the games and he's like oh i should have just killed everybody here do this do that uh the last game in particular we're two between bottom like we could have killed him two times there but you know 
So, well, he did end up getting uh, ranked, I think, third in All Pro. So yeah. uh, clearly, uh, there's other people that agree that he's a top uh, AD, even if uh, perhaps the general sentiment isn't that he's the the best. Mm-hmm. Um, speaking about All Pro and the voting around that stuff, um, I mean, full disclosure, my vote was for Dig as coaching staff of the split. Um, yeah. and they did not end up getting that cloud nine did, uh, what, what do you think of the, the dig coaching, uh, staff and how do they compare to coaching stuff that you've had in the past? Because I think even if they didn't end up winning it, there's a lot of sentiment from people that think like, oh, this coaching staff is great given expectations were lower for this team, at least mm-hmm. externally. So what do you, what do you think of the staff? Staff, uh, they gave us a lot of juice over the split, uh, definitely worked really hard, you know? on helping our players catch up in their knowledge. In particular, you know, our solars are new, and then I was mentoring Neo on for his knowledge as best we could. And definitely can't really learn in a split, but we were able to peak, you know, at the right time, be able to get into playoffs, contend for playoffs. So uh yeah, big shout out to Jim Mabry. Sorry, there's, there's Jim and Jimmy, so I always <laughs> Yeah. yeah. What but uh... I did a really good job. Where where do you think the the team per, or the coaching staff provides value? Because it's really obviously hard for a lot of people on the outside. They just sort of say like, "Oh, this team performed really well. It must be a good coaching." So where do you think like the value actually is when when the coaches come in? I don't know if it's in mm-hmm. developing the rookies. I don't know if it's in draft or you know figuring out macro. I don't know. Mm-hmm. Uh, definitely need multiple people for drafts. So the coaching staff has to be. I wouldn't say stacked, but you mean multiple people. We got like three right now. And where they provide value is it's always different. Every team you're gonna come in, you know, see what your strengths are, what needs to be filled, uh, and then, you know, I wouldn't want to say slot yourself in, but play to our strengths and you know, help us shore up our weaknesses where our team is like, okay, they came in, we have a game plan. We got Dardock, you know, variety of picks you can play, insane counter picks, you know, definitely a boon for us in draft and then off of that you know teams have a hard time drafting and stuff so playing towards that and understanding what our strong side is on the team what our weak side is based on our players but our team right now currently we're very flexible we can play both sides so that's great and off of that the coaches just have to pay attention to the small details because a lot of players skip those kind of things whether it be matchup uh if we're playing strong side weak side if you're dying on the other side, not paying attention to how the jungler is pathing, everything all in that regard. And making sure everyone uh, gets on the same page. So if two players don't understand something and they're arguing, then the coach steps in, you know, okay, do this and that, et cetera. And it's always expected coaches watch VODs from every region so that they can bring in, you know, picks, play styles, uh, stuff that we aren't doing or we don't bring. Uh, other than that, you draft towards your players too. So I wouldn't say draft is all in the coaches. It's just like, what can your team play and what are they not? Yeah. So I think a lot of teams drafts are always based on, uh, sometimes there's like coaches who just say, fuck you and you don't draft like that. But our, our staff, it's always catered to, yeah. What do the players want to play? What do we think we can get an advantage on? Yeah. I think. But yeah. Fairly collaborative. It sounds like. Yeah. Mm. Okay, well, spring is now unfortunately over for Dig, but what are your expectations for what this team will accomplish in summer? I don't know if you think you guys are going to win summer, or if you're mm-hmm. like, hey, we're just trying to get to Worlds, or you know, I'm kind of curious where. What are your expectations for the team as it moves into summer? Going in summer, gotta work hard in off season, man. Get tons of knowledge on matchups, being able, to, you know, counter pick what people are doing, you know, hard punishing matchups like. All for all the laners, and just being able to bring that because our definitely our drafts today showed like <laughs> enemy team like we're playing like high skill cap comp and the enemy team just has the press R comp exactly, right basically, so it's very easy for them to play and we got to be you know way better if we're gonna you know play like that and we weren't so we lost and uh, but practice on those matchups come in you know with this is what I want. This is what I want to do. And then when the meta cha- changes, like be able to adapt towards that when into next. Other than that, like, yeah. Once we get that baseline, I think our macro is great, but like we're definitely losing in lanes currently. 
And so do you think, you know, let's say you can shore up the lane situation. Is Dignitas yeah. a world's bound team? Is Dignitas a title contender for summer split? Uh, for sure. Uh, we were pulling games off of teams that were, people didn't expect us to be, albeit some of those, they obviously ended. Right. So we got good engages, but I do think going into summer, we're going to be better. Yeah. Very good. Well, hey, uh, Afro, is there anything you want to say to any of the fans out there? Yeah. I mean, thanks for supporting us, guys. Everybody trying their best out here. You know, first playoffs for three of our guys uh, definitely had a lot of nerves, but going into the next play, I think we're going to do a lot better. Everyone super hungry, a lot of drive, you know, always flexible, willing to, you know, sacrifice for the team. Uh, for me, you know, what more can you ask for? Yeah. Just got to get experience under our belt and go forward strong. Very good. Well, thank you so much, Afro, Afro for the uh, interview today. Uh, congratulations on the performance for the team over the course of the split. Because, again, like I know an unfortunate loss today, but I think a lot of people really did uh, enjoy seeing how often you guys were able to take those games uh, that people mm. did not expect. So uh, thanks again for the interview. And for everyone else, you can check out the rest of my coverage of all things LCS right here on my YouTube channel. What is your favorite type of pie? Uh, well, if you answered cherry, and even if you didn't answer cherry, boy, do I have some good news for you. Alienware has now done the first ever uh, mechanical keyboard laptop situation as a collaboration with Cherry. So when you guys hear about like Cherry keys or whatever, you can now get those on as an upgrade, an optional upgrade on the M15 and M17 laptops. It's just got announced this week as I'm filming this outro. Uh, so go check them out over at alienware.com slash Travis. There's a link in the description below, but it's kind of cool because, you know, a lot of people, they don't especially gamers they want that kind of mechanical feel and uh now you can actually get that in a laptop which normally you can't so it's really cool that alienware has been able to do this uh with cherry you can go find out more information about it on the alienware site and uh i w i had thought about getting some cherry pie and eating it in this outro and then i just um i didn't get around to it and uh sometimes i worry about my lack of commitment to really making these outros as great as I envisioned them to be.